I think that uh, we are going to enter also in, a, in, an in another difficult thing inside the cath lab, as with my track clip, and I think that uh, we are, uh, the echo is really essential there. No doubt that uh, periprosthetic leaks, uh, mainly in the mitral valve, are really relevant. And uh, when we face a patient with uh, such a leak, we need to clearly uh, establish and carefully think about the risk of the intervention. Because surgery may be indicated in patients with heart failure, with uh, periodic blood transfusion uh, needs, with uh, severe valvular regurgitation, or really, uh, when we do think that the prognosis of that patient is really poor if we don't do nothing. Then the first question is how to evaluate this, uh, the severity of the periprosthetic leak. And there is no doubt, and this was a nice paper published uh, years ago by uh, Bill, just showing that uh, really the severity of this uh, uh, periprosthetic regurgitation is really difficult and mainly it's difficult to establish if we are facing a patient with eccentric jet. So how to quantitate that? This is the first question. And I think it's not easy, it's not easy. And we need to uh, analyze in a very comprehensive uh, uh, way, just using the qualitative data that we can obtain with the jet density, the deceleration, with the semi-quantitative uh, measurements that we also do have establishing a cut of values between the mild, moderate, or severe uh, uh, regurgitation, like vena contracta, the uh, ratio with the jet with it, the jet area, and also we have the quantitative data that we need to know, and uh, my strong recommendation here is that you need to do quantitative assessment always, because once we face, you face a uh, a really difficult patient like that, you need, your lab need to be used to do those quantitative measurements in order not to uh, do it in a difficult patient just for the first time. So you need to be used to these uh, uh, calculations with regurgitant volume, regurgitant uh, uh, fraction, or the uh, error. So in fact, we have some pitfalls, no doubt we have some pitfalls. And uh, we don't have extensive uh, validation uh, publications in, uh, in patients with periprosthetic leaks. I think that also we know that the shadowing effect of the produced by, by the uh, mechanical valves is really, really a pitfall. Also, we need to analyze the different jets because uh, we are thinking that a patient with a periprosthetic leak has only one leak, but this is not the case in most patients. And there are different uh, criteria used by the partner, by the BARC, and in fact now uh, uh, led by the American Society is, uh, is a, a working group just dealing with uh, the, uh, this issue. So what, what do we expect from ECHO in the leak closure? First diagnosis, no doubt that transthoracic echo plays also here a role, mainly in patients with aortic prosthesis. Uh, transophageal is a must in both cases, but for sure adds uh, more value in cases of uh, the uh, mitral prosthesis. I think that uh, one thing that we need to analyze carefully before closing the leak is the periprocedural uh, uh, data that we obtain. We need to confirm the location and the severity of the paravalvular regurgitation. We need to exclude certain complications. I mean, this patient with a periprosthetic leak has endocarditis. We need to really rule out all these things, thrombi in the, in the, uh, inside the prosthesis. And then, as usual, we need to speak the same language as the interventional cardiologist. So we need to locate the dehiscence, and for this, I am sure that you have all this in your echo labs, but you need to uh, just consider where the aorta is, where it's lateral with uh, septal, lateral, posterior, anterior, and then the landmarks that is very useful is both the aorta and the left, left atrial appendage. So today we have uh, the navigators that uh, for sure also helps and helps the interventional cardiologist because in fact the location of the leak has been also related to the success of the procedure. So in uh, uh, 
Yeah, let me show you one example of uh, uh, how you can help the, with the navigators, the interventional cardiologist. Is, uh, you can display, this will be the screen of the interventional cardiologist with the fluoro. You can superimpose the, uh, the green here in the probe means that is synchronized between the fluoro, the x-ray, and the 3D echo, and the echo. You can rotate the image, you can show where the wire is, you can see where is, uh, uh, with the color, where is the the leak and help in positioning the uh, guideline, the, the wire. So what is the, in terms of mitral prosthesis, we have uh, much more experience with in, in our hospital with mitral prosthesis. We do more than the aortic uh, uh, closures. And uh, it's uh, clear that you need to uh, sweep the probe in all the different angles and, and cutting planes in order to assess e exactly where the leak is. Real-time 3D echo, I think, is a must in these procedures. It really helps in, the, in not on, only in understanding the anatomy, but precisely select where the wire should go. 3D echo also help in the positioning the wire. 3D echo also help in sizing the exactly what is the location of the leak, and with the color Doppler, we can really analyze what is the size of the leak. Sometimes it's um, difficult with 3D color to assess the severity due to the volume rate, but to size is quite accurate. So this is uh, one example showing that the leak usually is not unique. Just have a look how is the different leaks that we have in this patient with a mitral prosthesis. And in fact, you can see it much better here, so there are different leaks, and then you will need to decide what to do with this patient. As you can see in the 2D echo, we are facing a patient almost that there is a complete dehiscence the of the mitral prosthesis. So what we did in this case is, um, well, this was the third surgery of the patient, so we decided trying to close this uh, extensive different leaks in the patient. So with the 3D echo, you can see, uh, you can see clearly the wire. And uh, four hours later, starting the procedure, we uh, close the different uh, uh, leaks with, uh, with uh, a lot of patients. And I think it was really, really, and you can see the final result of the patient. This was a, a, a 80 year old uh, uh, patient and in fact, uh, uh, is do still doing well. Well, it's not only severity, detecting the location, helping during the procedure and assessing the result, it's also detecting complications. And I think that this is extremely important inside the cath lab. And I'm going to show you just a couple of examples. There is a patient with a mitral prosthesis, mechanical prosthesis, and immediately after placing the, the uh, closure in the leak, you can see that one of the discs is absolutely uh, occluded. And with the uh, mean uh, here, you can see the gradient of the prosthesis after that. So you can really uh, help just uh, analyzing what happens, not only closing the leak, but also what had happens with the different disc of the prosthesis. Also, um, well, we did this case. We implanted the device. We said, well, great job, close. Then uh, we are going to um, abandon the cath lab, but then this happened. And uh, well, you know, when you see that, well, this is the fluoro. The patient had a mitral prosthesis, an aortic prosthesis, and something happened here in the left atrium. So at this time, you know what to do. It's the typical moment when the invasive cardiologist says, hmm, hmm. So we were there. So immediately after, this is the left atrium, the left ventricle, mitral prosthesis, and here is something that is floating and swimming there. So now is the moment when the invasive cardiologist says, hmm, hmm. <laughs> and uh, absolutely silent there. But uh, what to do? Remember that this patient, we decided not to intervene the patient because it was an extremely high risk for a, um, 
intervention. So we were lucky that the patient had the aortic prosthesis. So as you can see here, at a certain moment, the device was uh, um, in the aortic prosthesis, and with the lasso, the invasive cardiologist was able to take it out. So uh, I think this is uh, one of the moments that uh, you really need echo, and you really have, uh, need to have an echo friend inside the cath lab, yeah. So this is one of the things that may happen. What happens with aortic prosthesis? Well, I think that aortic prosthesis, uh, don't forget in these uh, cases also the transthoracic approach for uh, uh, analyzing exactly the position. It really helps. Uh, transophageal is also very useful to locate the, uh, where is exactly the, the, uh, the leak. And also you need to uh, have here, same in the same as you had the aorta and the lateral appendage, the coronary ostia are usually very helpful for internal landmarks. Well, uh, how do, uh, do we have experience with that? There are different papers showing the feasibility and the uh, usefulness of closuring the uh, aortic leaks in, uh, um, uh, percutaneously. And I think that in summary, the role of ECHO in closure and leaks is clearly first assessing the severity, guiding the procedure in terms of the transeptal puncture, supporting the positioning of the device, and don't forget that these procedures are quite challenging, so real-time evaluation of complications is really important inside the, cath inside the cath lab. No doubt that you are doing the procedure just to help the patient in the long term, and you need to assess the long-term uh, uh, evaluation of the procedure. So thank you. Thank you.